Okay, good afternoon, everyone. So firstly, um, thank you all very much for your time. I hope you can hear me. Um, if you have any comments throughout, there's a chat function in the bottom right. And also any questions, please feel free to use the question mark function in the bottom right of your screen to ask questions. Um, and we'll make sure we get around to those. If not today, um, we'll follow up via email to make sure that we answer any outstanding questions you have. Uh, I'd also just like to make you aware that we are recording this session and we'll make that available afterwards. To start with um, the agenda. So I'm sure you've all been overloaded during these rather turbulent times with Corona with lots of information out there on the internet. So we'll try and make sure this is light to the point and also just engaging and interesting for you. So we'll, we have a session lined up for approximately 30 minutes. I'll talk through some of the latest trends um, and where we can support you. And then I'll invite our guest speaker, Dr. Marwa, to discuss some of the real life applications he has out in the field. And then finally, we'll have plenty of time at the end for questions and answers. So just to reiterate, if you have any questions throughout, use that function in the bottom right of your screen with the question mark, um, which will flag up any questions which we'll answer as and when we can. So a quick bit about me. So I'm Sam. Um, I've spent a number of years in the digital healthcare space, and I'm now spearheading some of our latest developments at Keela. Um, and I think I've witnessed and experienced a lot of trends in other healthcare sectors that are starting to impact ophthalmology, which is really why I'm here to talk to you. I think it's a really exciting and interesting time. And one of the key things that we want to make sure is that we're working with yourselves, the doctors in the fields, to make sure that we can support you in the work that you do. Um, so I think, to, just to set the scene a bit, there are a few, well, three key trends really, which are really changing the way we work right now. So of course, Corona, this has been, had a massive impact across the world. Beyond shielding and cleaning of equipment and how we manage patients, I think this has also really accelerated that push towards providing remote access to specialists while maintaining that distance. Especially now, we might not be able to see our patients face to face so much. Um, so we need that additional support, which is being seen across the sector. Further to this, when that's properly implemented, I think there are, of course, a huge amount of benefits that can be made through the diagnosis support and uh, time management in terms of how you manage those patients. A second big trend that I think we're seeing across the field medically, of course, is the age-old problem of how do you ensure that patients remain engaged and they actually adhere to the treatment plan set to them. I thought that this figure was really interesting from the American Academy of Ophthalmology, which is published just over a month ago, I believe. And to highlight basically the key, the key result from this study was over half of patients aren't taking, um, but aren't taking over a third of their administered me medicine treatment plan appointments. I think this is obviously a huge problem in how we make sure that we can provide adequate care, care ophthalmic care to those patients in the field. And then I think thirdly is actually how we try and engage those patients, build that understanding. And I think one of the key trends here is of course that through the smartphone revolution now really, we're starting to expect imaging on demand, ophthalmology in general, optometry as well used to be a very much um, an examine a bit of a mystery. You would do examinations and patients wouldn't really know what's being seen or why certain treatments are being suggested. Whereas now there's a trend where that is expected to be conducted at the same time as the examination. So I think that's enough from me just quickly. And I'd like to actually just see who out of you there are awake and engaged and with us and maybe sharing some collaborative learning. So I just have a quick question for you um, just to see what issues you face in the field. As you can see on the screen, there should be an option for you to select what innovation you see as most important moving forwards. So I think it would just be interesting for us all to share where we see some of these learnings going in the future. I'll just give you a minute just to make sure you get your answers in for that. Okay, so I've just ended the voting there. So I think you should be able to see on the screen now um, some of the results of that. So it's 
pretty interesting, I think, just to see across the field that we work in, really. I think there is a lot of alignment, especially in terms of that live teleconsultation, but also enabling, once we have those images, to actually be able to get support on that. So we might be able to leverage some of our colleagues, um, such as ophthalmic assistants, to do some of the imaging and then support in diagnosis of that. So hopefully that was um, interesting for you. And it's great for us just to understand where we can support you further. And from that, I think it's really interesting in terms of if we look at some of the equipment, really, and the solutions out there to support your work in the field. I think there are a number of different angles here, but we've just taken a view of it, of some of those conditions where you need to look right out into the periphery um, and the options available around that as well as the cost, which is a significant barrier. This all started from some of our work in retinopathy of prematurity. I think it was very interesting when you look at this graph here, just to see that right now there effectively isn't a solution that really fits the requirements to get out into that periphery, but is also affordable and accessible. It, in fact, it almost acts in that linear relationship, as you can see by the dotted line. And I think historically speaking, when we look at some of the other equipment, such as portable fundus cameras, the DIY kits, when you use your smartphone to image, these enable that documentation angle, but they don't in parallel enable the um, a proper full retinal examination out into the periphery. And I think that's really one of the gaps right now that we think we can really support on in terms of historically speaking, you it was either an examination or you would go to a machine for imaging and documentation. They are quite separate channels. Whereas what I think we're seeing now is the ability to be able to do that examination and automatically get those images out for documentation, for analysis, for patient engagement, which is really exciting as it saves everyone who's doing those examinations a massive amount of time and money. And it also, of course, engages the patient further. And I think that's effectively the problem that we as Keela took and put our best brains on. So we saw that there was this opportunity to provide an affordable and accessible tool that was able to do this, um, especially for our ophthalmologists effectively and our optometrists. And so the way we went about this was we're looking at what solutions might be able to do that and how our expertise could support. And we effectively came across uh, this by working in close collaboration with some doctors in Argentina, especially. And what we've done is effectively taken the indirect ophthalmoscopy technique um, and adapted it with a smartphone. This is important for a few key reasons. So it enables hands-free imaging. It enables that wide field of examination. And then you can also embed software on that to support the user as well. Of course, this isn't stereoscopic, um, but I think one of the key parts here is that you're still able to do that examination. And from it, the clever part is that you're able to automatically get that fundus image out. So I've just got an example here, which I can walk you through from one of those mentioned doctors, Gabriela in Argentina. So you can see here, she is examining a baby for retinopathy of prematurity, and she's wearing the device on her head. So what she sees is actually this second image here, and that's using the smartphone screen and the smartphone flashlight to examine the retina. This will be conducted in a live video, so as she's doing the examination. But where it gets clever is now we have algorithms that can support that. So from this, this frame captured of a video here, you can see that we're automatically able to extract that singular fundus image. And we're also working on a beta function where we can integrate that in to a wide field view of the fundus, as you can see here on the right. So I think for me, this is really exciting based off some of the early work that we've done in the field in terms of how we can really save time for our users out there, um, as well as reducing that need for multiple pieces of equipment, so both examination and documentation. And then that third angle of patient engagement is hugely critical. Tie that as well, of course, to um, COVID-19 and that push towards teleconsultation. And I think this has really shown a lot of value in terms of how we can support remote training and remote diagnosis. 
when you might not be able to have um, that face-to-face -face contact with a patient. So I think I've been talking for quite some time here, so I'd like to introduce Dr. Kenshuk Mawa. So, I mean, you can see here on the screen, there's a whole host of reasons that he is an absolute expert in the field and it's been a pleasure to work with, but perhaps Dr. Mawa, I can pass over to you just to briefly introduce yourself. Hey, Sam, uh, thank you. Thank you for all the support uh, from Healer. Uh, yeah, I'm Dr. Kenshuk Marwa. I'm a vitro retina specialist. Uh, I am uh, the I'm at as a senior consultant with Shivo My Care and uh, uh, fundus imagery actually interests me. And uh, I've been working for a few months now with uh, Keeler and uh, especially Sam. And uh, he has been a very good support. We have been using MIO now uh, since a long time. And, and the journey has been very fruitful. We are able to do so many things uh, with the MIO. Uh, so here is it. It's like a laptop in the air. That is, I keep on telling Sam that it is so easy. And uh, while you see when I'm examining the patient, the, micro, uh, the phone, which we carry all around us, we can easily dock on to this um, this MIO device and you can take images on the go. So uh, what I feel for this mobile indirect ophthalmoscope is that it is lightweight and it is easy to carry everywhere. Like if I go to the wards, if I'm seeing a papilledema patient and, and uh, the neurophysician wants to, to have a look, at the funders so I can share those images uh, with him. So it is very lightweight. The mobile we are carrying everywhere. So and, and this is uh, an added tool uh, which works like a laptop. It has a great software. And uh, I was initially very worried about my um, phone that it won't fall off that magnetic device. But the, the they have made it like that, that it is very strong uh, MIO. And uh, about the software, I think just don't look it as and compare to any other device. I would because I've used a lot of uh, devices as a retina specialist. But uh, the e the best part about MIO is that there is ease of data entry. Like you can you know put up and it's very lucid. It's very simple. You just put in the patient's data is entered, and specifically for the retinopathy of prematurity where uh, there's so many of things that you can add. You can add the baby's weight uh, and the uh, what is the gestational age of the baby. And then you put in all the data entries and you put an email ID also of the patient. So you can you know send the, e uh, the findings to the patients if you want. Or either you can put it like if, if I put my email as Shivo my care and I just get the images on my email. So uh, that is very good. And like uh, in the image also, like I am doing a retina examination. The patient was of retinal detachment. So the if you can see the doctor is standing behind me. So I was able to show her uh, the findings that uh, what the findings uh, there were. And so and perhaps, perhaps you can talk through some of those key applications that you've seen. So I see here on the screen some images that you kindly <laughs> provided from some of those day-to-day -day yeah. applications and how you see this um, fitting in your practice, which you're obviously using very regularly. Yeah, so I have been using it in the retinopathy of prematurity. Uh, it's very easy. You can easily you know, carry it. There's no extra weight of it. So I have used it in retinopathy of prematurity. It is uh, very easy and specifically during COVID times, you, you can you know keep a distance and uh, take the imagery and document it and uh, like uh, patients who have lasered for ROP I have even documented that I shared it with Sam also that uh, those things the peripheral uh, findings can be very well documented the other uh, very important usage that I uh, found was uh, apart than ROP was like uh, here you can see glaucoma so uh, you can uh, document the fundus findings, the optic nerve findings and you know uh, you can share it to the patient see you have a uh, w what stage of glaucoma you are in and uh, definitely like I previously shared about papilledema and uh, this another side slide the central retina what, what we talk about uh, there was a patient where, where I'm suspecting that this is a polypoidal uh, choroidal vasculopathy 
so uh, this patient uh, of amd so we were giving him injection so so you know in the notes i was able to enter that uh, what is the disease is having and uh, what amount of injections we have already given him and the other eye also started to develop uh, the wet stage of choroidal neovascular membrane so i was able to document it and you know share it with my uh, his son and his uh, daughter in law both are doctors so i was more able to share the pictures as soon as i took the fundus images from my mobile so i was just able to send them just like a uh, uh in a click i was able to send it to them and uh, the other thing the very useful things are diabetic retinopathy so where you can you know uh, document the clinically significant macular edema uh, and proliferative diabetic retinopathy like one of the patients he came so he had vitreous hemorrhage so he was saying that he has had vitreous hemorrhage but when we actually looked into the eye there were more like a fibrous proliferative changes in the retina so those things and what else i have documented is central serous retinopathy images were captured very beautifully one of the images uh, being shown here is of the trauma so this lady she had a injury with the cricket ball so i used to have a lot of uh, cricket ball injuries while i was in bombay under dr natarajan sir so uh, so these are the typical kind of pictures you have in trauma so you can you know uh, document it while you are at the mio so it makes your life so easy and it is just like another uh, the phone which you are carrying and this you can just use it so easily and i would say to everyone that it has a excellent uh, software that you know helps to you know present it in a better way so uh, and the other conditions that we have used it in is in cr view uh, so stbr view ill disease these pictures i have taken and i already shared uh, with killer also that these are the images that what i have done as of now so so this has been a great learning and uh, with a with the support like killer they are they are the best in the fields and uh, uh, it well, the life has been much more easier after using a killer mio thank you very much for that so i think yeah, yeah we much appreciate that but it's really exciting yeah. i think for everyone to hear how you integrate that into your practice so i mean you've talked through some of those reasons are there any other points that you yeah. want to highlight so what yeah. so, why so why do like, you adopt this yeah so uh, why i feel is that why i have adopted it is it is much more easier for me so i can carry it anywhere uh, especially in the wards like you know when when the patients who are critically ill maybe i was called in an icu like maybe i was called in an icu to see a patient so that patient had papilledema so uh, i was able to show to the doctor see he has papilledema he might need to change your treatment plans according to his fundus findings so there and then i was able to you know share that with the patient and and once a patient uh, another patient had a disc edema so we uh, took the photos of uh, that patient and sent an email to the to the concerned physician who was not in the same hospital so you know it it helps to actually you know exchange uh, this data this uh, whatever thing you have done whatever you have seen you know it helps to capture that and you know send it around everywhere so to to the doctor to the patient so here is the photo of a patient he had a recent retinal detachment and this patient in fact had a horseshoe tear so we were able to show him that look you have a horseshoe tear this is a cause for the retinal detachment and i was able to convince the doctor also so i showed her that uh, while while uh, i was uh examining so she was at my shoulder side and she saw that see this is the uh, this is the problem so and this this tool i uh, you know really feel that uh, in teaching in uh, in teaching the newer students who are in ophthalmology and maybe in optometry so you know it it is a great great training tool that uh, because you know this is very cost effective the biggest point is being cost effective and getting such a good software along with it which actually makes your life easier and you know keep those things for the future also hmm that's really really fascinating it's exciting to hear when you bring up some of those real life applications essentially so being able to show your colleague and confirm that diagnosis it's yeah amazing to hear that really and i know that we've obviously talked about some of where this can go in the future we have our own thoughts and you as your with your expertise have a lot of thoughts on this as well i think it's yeah. one of the exciting things here that there's so much that we can do here um but perhaps you just want to highlight a few of the key points around that 
yeah so uh, so what what that is what i was talking about that the future of killer mio is immense because uh, right now uh, let's start with say rop so in rop you are uh, you will be able to maybe record more and upload and maybe set a reminder also when you want to see the patient next when you want that baby you know to come next to you and maybe that reminder can be sent via sms also or via an email so those things can be done and uh, and the intensity of the phone light is you know we can you know grade it like uh, the, the the simple thing that we have done like i was working with my colleagues like uh, dr akash so he was like uh, you know you can put a tape on the flash and uh, you can actually control the lighting of the mobile which is actually you know going inside and you you fear about the macular toxicity so uh, most of the time i use the tape on the flash part so that actually helps to reduce the intensity of the light while you're recording on the mobile phone and uh, the best part the other part is that you're totally hands free that you are totally hands free to put in the data and you know to concentrate on the other hand with the with the 20 adapter lens on your hand and you know to maneuver the periphery and you know see those and uh, other thing was i was discussing with sam was that it can be used as an anterior segment uh, capturing device because in covid times people uh, are afraid most of the people were afraid to you know uh, come on the slit lamp and you know the people cannot speak uh, while they are on the slit lamp so i feel that uh, it, ca- it it has a very good uh, usage in an anterior as an anterior segment device for capturing uh, photos and the other thing i feel was that like uh, uh, there's a share screening option that so one of the colleagues dr patel akash patel i was discussing with that uh, maybe you know uh, if, if we can uh, share that as a on a screen like uh, screen sharing is there chrome casting is there so you know uh, you have a big television in your maybe an i so you make you can just uh, screen on screen sharing on that and uh, it can be used as a great tool for you know fundus examination in the periphery where where you, there are not enough doctors uh, and uh, maybe an ophthalmic assistant you know can help and it is it is a great tool for a telemedicine in this you know uh, as a in the covid times where you know you only one person is enough uh, maybe a uh, maybe a registrar or maybe a senior doesn't take same image and you know send it to the professor that look uh, sir this is a finding what do you feel so uh, the that is what technology is all about so uh, and uh, i think killer is already there so with mio i think uh, there are so many advantages and uh, and whatever the price they have said it is very nominal for such a with, which comes with such a good software so i think the it is uh, not just about killer killer itself is a uh, big brand but uh, this has a a uh, good software which is built in which actually helps you know to document to share and for teaching and all those things so it, it is a good tool which will be you know easily attainable and um, it, it it would be really That's nice really for uh, people to use it yeah i couldn't agree more and like you say i yeah. i definitely agree it's not about killer i think what's really exciting mm-hmm. here is that we're not just trying to build something and sell it essentially what we want to do is really work with you in the field such as how yeah. we're doing with yourself dr mawa so yeah, unfortunately you. i'm aware we are running out of time rapidly but it's been a real pleasure to talk to you and i think i would just like to close with just a quick question retrospectively from the whole group um just around what problems you face in your day-to-day practice ex- effectively so when you're trying to examine the retina get a fundus image what do you see as the biggest issues there so i'll just give you kind of 30 seconds or so to get an answer on that because i think that would be really interesting to kind of share our interests across the group and see where we we really think that we can make the most impact effectively and then once we've let a few more of those answers in um i'll i'll just quickly close up and then we'll have plenty of time for questions afterwards and it, really interesting there. So I think that really reiterates some of the points that we talked about. So especially beyond this kind of COVID-19 situation in terms of cost just being a massive barrier, where I think that we're really trying to support in providing that affordable and accessible tool, but also being able to get right out there into the periphery, record what you see and document that, as well as sharing it, are clearly huge. Great. So really interesting insights there. 
And I'd just like to thank you all for your time. I hope you all found it quite insightful and engaging. And especially thanks to Dr. Marwa, of course, for joining us. I've put our thank contact you, details here on the screen. So if you want to reach out to any of us, please do. And I'd also just like to thank some of our other early adopters that we're working with to guide the development of this for the future. And so with that, um, I'd like to effectively open up to questions for myself and Dr. Marwa. Yeah, I, I think somebody like Elsa uh, is asking some questions. So she's raised her hand. So I think Elsa, you can uh, ask her. Uh, so there's one question that has come up uh, on the screen that what phones is this compatible with? Sam, I think you can answer that one. Yes. So um, the phones it's compatible with. So right now we've developed this on iPhones, so iOS systems for iPhone 6 and up. However, we are actively working on an Android port for this uh, later this year, 2020. So currently iPhone 6 and up and soon Android. Uh, but uh, like Sam, like we were discussing, like with the new iPhone, which is much more smaller in size and much more cost effective, I think the, the software on the uh, Apple iOS is really very good. So it's, it's very much compatible. So I've been mean, uh, extremely easy to use. Exactly. Yeah. So I think we have a few more questions. So. Uh, the, there's another question uh, by Elsa. So she's asking what, uh, sir, is there a need for dilatation just like an uh, ordinary indirect? Uh, I can answer that. Uh, see, like uh, in, in ROP, you know, you know, you need that ROP kind of a formulation that you mix the Tropica Sil Plus drops in an equal concentration with uh, distilled water. So uh dilatation in babies would just happen like an ordinary dilatation like if, uh, if it's a hypertensive patient you would just go ahead with a plain uh, tropical cell and and uh, a normal patient with a tropical cell plus so there is a uh, dilatation is definitely required for you know better imaging uh right now uh, they're working on a more a small pupil kind of a fundus imagery but uh, but right now uh, dilatation is definitely required So how is the uh, image captured? I'm happy to yeah. answer that one. So yeah. right now, um, what Dr. Marwa showed, for example, is the early prototype where you use that smartphone, um, the smartphone flashlight, you use the smartphone flashlight to um, illuminate the retina, and then you record that video footage um, of your examination looking through a condensing lens. Um, now, what I described earlier as well is the what we're working on now with some clever algorithms in the background. So from that live video, automatically extracting only the good images of the fundus. So you don't need to do any manual work going through and selecting frames. That's done automatically for you. Uh, one thing I would like to add here, Sam, is that on the on the software that there is a small ring. So you need to place your 20 diopter lens within that ring. So that would capture the best of the images. So uh, it is right there in the center, and you just need to focus. There's a screen. Um, on the screen, there comes a circle, like a white, shallow circle. So you know you can actually capture uh, in, in that area. So you keep. Uh, you need to keep your condensing lens there, and just focus uh, with your uh, with your head gear because you know your hands are totally concentrated on the lens, and it's uh, much. More, the images come much much better when you are right there in in that particular circle. Very good point. OK, so got a couple of really good questions here. So thank you for those. So I'll, I'll take uh, go through them one by one. So field of view. So there's no limit to the field of view. Um, it's a similar technique to indirect ophthalmoscopy. So it depends, of course, on the condensing lens you're using. But because you can move, pivot your head and also the position of the patient's eye in a condensing lens, you can get that full field of view. So there's no limitation in that sense. Uh, DICOM compatibility. So right now it is not DICOM compatible, but we are actively developing the software. Um, so that will come over time. The third question, is the software licensed or can it be used on multiple phones? So the way the software is set up is you have 
your email ID and password, so it's uh, encrypted to that account. And with that email ID and password, you can log on to any smartphone with that application. Number four, do you manually take, make the mosaic, or is it automatic? So right now that we are in a beta phase of that mosaicing, but that whole process is automatic. So over the, the coming months, we're improving the algorithms behind that. Um, but the process for that is intended to be automatic. So thank you for those. So how can I use this for teaching purpose? Yeah. Can answer that. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> Thanks, Sam. Uh, so uh, definitely, like uh, we have showed in the presentation, that uh, it can be used as documentation. So anybody who's like come. Um, uh, maybe in an optometry or an ophthalmology. So uh, whatever images you are capturing, you know, th those can be uh, fed on a maybe a presenting slide or, you know, those data can be collected. And, you know, there are so many things, even in the grading of diabetic retinopathy, like you want to tell uh, the, the, the new residents that it is clinically significant macular edema. So, you know, there are three types of clinically significant macular edema. So you can show that on a, you can take those pictures. You you have a variety of patients and in India, there are a lot of patients. So you don't have a, this thing that you cannot take an image. So you take an image and you just uh, uh, show it to the, uh, to the, to your fellow colleagues or to your junior doctors. And, uh, you know, there, there's so much of um, possibility in this. Couldn't agree more. <laughs> uh, the weight of the new headgear, including the iPhone. That is a good question. I don't think I have the answer to you offhand. I can make sure that we circulate that information afterwards, but the headgear is approximately from memory 200 to 300 grams. And I think a smartphone, an average smartphone is about 150 to 200 grams. So you're talking 400 grams approximately, but I'll find the exact answer to that and get back to you. How difficult is it to take a retinal picture? So I would, I would answer that. I would answer that. So uh, the difficulty is like the uh, see with any new gadget, like with any new uh, uh, thing you get, it takes time. It takes practice. So I think it is just about, you know, uh, see, everybody nowadays indirect is so easily available. People know how to use it, know how to focus on the how to hold your lens. So uh, I think it comes more with practice. You know, your speed, like when I started using this prototype and, and now my speed would have doubled. So so I can say it is just uh, a matter of time that uh, it, it takes that. You you get all, get a hang of it. So so that is that is it takes time. So but it's not very hard. It it's quite quite easy. Uh, there's a question from Dr. Natarajan, sir. Uh, it can be, sir. Uh, first of all, welcome. He he was my professor in uh, uh, retina. I've learned retina under Dr. Natarajan, sir. So I welcome him and I thank for all his teaching. And uh, uh, diabetic retinopathy screening, uh, we can definitely use. And uh, sir, I was discussing with Sam that uh, uh, artificial intelligence can be a big, big tool. And uh, this is where we need to, you know, move on in um, this mobile indirect ophthalmoscopy because uh, you have a good software and we have everything right there in place. So it is just uh, time, uh, maybe a need of integration. So I think, uh, sir, we will be moving uh, towards uh, more towards artificial intelligence. I think it'll take time, but but definitely, uh, I think AI is a way to go, sir. I think the exciting here is, thing here is that once we have those images, there's actually a lot of um, options and developments going on in the AI space. So I think the key here is enabling um, everyone to get those images simply, which is really where this comes into play. So is the software HIPAA compliant? Um, so right now, the software is built to HIPAA compliance and it's going through the regulatory um, process certification 
effectively. So the image, where is the image saved and how can we share it? So the image is saved uh, on the device within the application and there is, so that is uh, securely stored within the application. And then you are able to transfer that to other colleagues that are also on the application or also to, via a password protected PDF um, on email. So this has been designed to ensure that patient information is of course secure when that information is shared. So is there a need for a plus two add? Um, so perhaps Dr. Marwa and your experience using this, you'd, you could speak to how you find uh, having the smartphone in front of yourself <laughs> by using it. Uh, I, I, I have not felt a need to, you know, because it doesn't have that kind of an option of, you know, maybe adding a refractive lens or anything in front of it. But I feel that, um, see, the... Uh, lenses with everyone is like one time investment so whatever lens that you have and you are comfortable with and you you know uh, i have been using a 20 adapter lens since like 15 years now so i'm more comfortable with that so i just prefer to use uh, that and and you you see uh, with which your images are coming much better so i think um, it is about more about uh, that to me so like i am happy with my images and uh, i'm i'm just uh, uh, so I'll be experimenting more with the different type of lenses also in the future. Uh, uh, this is another question by Dr. Natarajan, sir. Uh, Sam, so uh, like, uh, sir also has an uh, optometry college and he has his own hospital in Mumbai. So uh, there's a lot of teaching also that goes on. Uh, under Dr. Natarajan. So I think uh, there can be a study also, like uh, uh, maybe a thesis or something can be done, you know, with uh, various comparative studies or various instruments can be done, sir. So I think uh, uh, definitely collaborative study is also an option. Sam can, you know, uh, put in more words on that. So maybe maybe with our optometry college also, you can, uh, we can do something. Yeah, thank you very much for your interest in that. Um, so yes, we'll follow up afterwards and the same goes to everyone. So we're very interested in how this can be used in the field. So look forward to talking with you further on that in the near future. Uh, so I think um, what was meant by that question was um, in terms of seeing the smartphone in front of your face, as opposed to the condensing lens. Oh, that is. In terms of that how is. you. That is, that is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um... I think uh, like most of the people, uh, most of the ophthalmologists must be using a press biopic glass. So maybe I've not, you know, gone to that. So I don't have much more experience on using a press biopic glass. So I can, I don't know the answer for that. I think, um, yes, it's something we're aware of. And I think it depends on the user a bit. So we're actively looking for ways to simplify that. So yes, any. Um, and then the next question is the approximate price. Um, so in rupees, we are talking in the region of 70,000 rupees. The exact price we can reach back out to you with afterwards, um, depend through our local dealers in your region. So there's a question here from Elsa, thank you, um, in terms of how how do you find a use of this compared to an indirect? So I'm happy to just briefly talk through this and then I can pass over to you, Dr. Marwa. I think what's interesting for me is, of course, this device is not stereoscopic, whereas a binocular indirect ophthalmoscope is. But with this device, you're able to do that examination without the stereoscopy. stereoscopy. But then you're also automatically able to extract any images from that for documentation, analysis, and transfer. So it's it's almost a combination of both um, a fundus camera and an indirect ophthalmoscope. Yeah, and perhaps absolutely. Dr. Marwa, if you have any more to add to that. Uh, 
uh yeah i totally agree with you like it is a good combination basically it's an indirect and also it it has a capturing option so you don't have to you know take the patient uh, he's there on the examination chair and you, you know when while you're doing an indirect you can also image together so so it's, it's basically two things in one and i am a big fan of uh, the software itself so excellent yeah so if and does the price include the app headgear and the 20 lens so um the the package is the headgear uh the the app um but not the lens at this point if a lens would be useful we can look into that with yourself and then is there a face shield available um so that's another great question and yes there is yeah. i think i showed a picture on the earlier Slide. Yeah, Sam. Uh, Sam actually, uh, the, the people at Killer and Sam, they delivered a breath shield. So, so usually the Killer is now coming with a breath shield. So uh, it is there on their uh, pages also on the, on the Killer website. Uh, there is a breath. Uh, they call it a breath shield. So uh, it, yeah. if it is incorporated with this, but uh, with Killer Advantage Plus, it is, it is incorporated. That is what I know. Exactly, and that comes mm -hmm. with the package as well. Um, I should have noticed that earlier. And so that just simply clips onto uh, the headband um, behind the smartphone in front of your face to provide that extra protection. Adding reading glasses is a great uh, possible addition as well to come over that presbyopic issue. Uh, I, I think, uh, Mr. Rangara, it is more uh, to do with your, you see, like a uh, like a multifocal glass or so. Uh, basically, you have to look at the intermediate uh, because that device is at the intermediate angle. So I think uh, that kind of a presbyopic glass, which actually looks into that intermediate progressive glass, that would uh, help with somebody who is having a reading glass. So, so I think uh, a. a a glass with a lesser power so you can you know focus on the it's like looking at a laptop so it is at almost the same distance yeah um and so i think we have time for just two more questions perhaps so and then any questions we don't get around to um we'll follow up with afterwards so there's a great question here in terms of is the montage of the image done by the software so right now um this is not but we are actively looking to include that so the montage i showed you is a beta function and within that there are some reflections and artifacts which we're looking to process out so we want to get that process refined and then look to include it with the software so it looks like that might be all of the questions for now yeah. So I'd just like to uh, reiterate my thanks for all of you attending and especially to Dr. Marwar as well. It's been great to have you and discuss through some of these uh, elements. And so we will upload, um, where is the slide? Oh, there we go. Uh, we'll yeah. upload the recording of this. And as I mentioned before, if you'd like to reach out to any of us, our contact details are there. Um, and yeah. we're happy to answer any questions or queries you might have. Thank you, Sam, uh, for excellently coordinating. And uh, thank you, Shane, on the other side of the AV and coordinating everything so well. I think it went very smoothly. And uh, I would thank all the participants who were who have uh, taken out their time from not over, not only in India, for from all over the globe. So I am really thankful to everyone uh, who responded uh, to this and, and been a part of this webinar today. So I am uh, really grateful to all of you for uh, giving your valuable time uh, for this. Great. Look forward to uh, speaking to you more. And as I mentioned, anyone, please reach out with any questions. So thank you and goodbye.